Hey everyone, I'm down in my messy living room instead of my messy office and I've got a delivery from Amazon. I've actually, well, there's actually a few things I've got. I, I bought some fuses the other day and today I got a voltage tester. Not the most exciting, but I need to find a fuse that's blown in my car and the one that it should be isn't blown. So I spoke to the mechanic and it's some miscellaneous fuse and I just have to test every one and that will hopefully help me do it. What I'd like to do in this video though is review this. The Fantaseal Heavy Duty Dual Suction Cut Mount. Now you can see here this is for DSLR cameras, action cameras and camcorders. If we get this box out of the way. Um, it doesn't really say much on the, past, uh, on the back, it just says that it's compatible with lots of different cameras. Um, you can see in the picture here that they've got like a, a DSLR size camera on the front. Now, I've spoken about this in the past, I do have these kind of suction cups. I've used these for holding smartphones, I've used them for holding action cameras, and I've also used it for holding my RX100, and it works, it works quite well. These, you know, work really well. I, I would say though that they're kind of, you know, at this size, you're really pushing the, you know, pushing it to its boundary as far as how much weight this can hold. I really wouldn't trust this holding anything heavier. I think it would fall down. Um, but these are you know, designed for action cameras really, and they're great for action cameras. But I wanted something a little bit stronger, and I wanted the option of being able to hold something a little bit bigger. Whether it's secure or not, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know how these suction cup things work. Uh, I was curious about it, and I've thought about buying one for a long time, so I thought, yeah, let's try it out. So this one retails at £40 in the UK. It'll be a similar price in the USA, it's for like $40 or so. And... Um, Let's see what this is like. Okay. So this is how it's presented. Quite heavy duty, isn't it? It's got like a big piece of tape around it. So I forget this piece out. So it's actually in a few different parts. This part here has got the tripod, etc. Uh, it's actually got a smartphone mount in it, it looks like. Is that a smart? Yes, yeah, a smartphone mount, I think. I think. I don't know. Um, so, this is actually a fixer upper type thing, um, and it doesn't look like. Okay, so again, maybe you'll consider this a minor thing, but this is £40, and there are no instructions. There are no instructions. The instructions in the back say this suction mount is only fit for smooth, dry, and clean flat surfaces, which kind of means that it's not going to stick in your dashboard. You really do have to secure it to your glass. So, um, there's no instructions, but what you do get are these suction cups. Now, for comparison, look at these. So I'll get it right way around. These are the, um, the Joby ones, and these work really well. Essentially what happens with these ones is you kind of get some lick it or put water on it or whatever, put it to the windshield and then you lock it. Now when this is locked, this is very secure. It has dropped once or twice because the windscreen was quite you know, damp and things like that. But look at the size of this thing. See the difference? Can you see the difference? So, um, there. There it is there. So that's one of them. I do have two. There's tape holding these together. And next we've got this. Now, if you watch my channel, you've probably seen this before. I've got about four or five of these now. Um, I've got one being used to record right now. I've got another one upstairs um, attached to one tripod. I've got another one attached to another tripod. I think this is my fourth one because this is a very common um, tripod kind of design. Um, this is actually, I believe it is, it's, it's identical to the one that's on my camera right now. So this thing is very secure. Um, and most importantly for me is that when you loosen this, you can put it to the side like this. So you can have it up there, but then you can bring it down and then lock it into place there. Now that might not sound like a big thing, but that is very, very important because when this um, when this is against your windscreen, you, you kind of need to get your, your camera at a funny angle because the windscreen obviously is at like 45 degrees or whatever it is. Um, so, right, I'm, I'm trying to do it the lazy way. What you have to do, if I can get this, is take off the base plate, attach it to the bottom of your camera, 
I'm just using this one as an example. I, I, I will try it with the larger camera as well, but that is recording right now. Um, and then when you've got the base plate, you can just attach it to this tripod, like so. So the idea is you slide it in and you do it like that and then you can lock it in. Um, this is secure. This isn't something that I need to worry about. And as far as this tripod, I know that it can carry the weight of my mirrorless camera because it's doing it right now. This is practically the same tripod, uh, tripod head that I have, the same ball head that I've got recording right now. So they also throw in an action camera mount. That's pretty good. If you've got a GoPro or any kind of GoPro compatible type action camera that uses this system, you've probably got a lot of these, but it's always good to have these. So this would basically go to the top of the tripod. Instead of the camera, I could put this in and then I can attach uh, an action camera. So that's pretty good. Now the last thing that it's got there, where is my phone? I think it's in my pocket. Uh, the last thing they've got is a smartphone holder. Now this isn't something that I expected. I, I don't remember seeing this in uh, the listing for the product, but, uh, uh, right, so, this uh, does hold my phone. I'm not a massive fan of these ones just because it's a little bit of a pain to get them in. Um, this one's a little bit different though. Now, I don't know if you can see this. You've got the tripod mount at the bottom there, right? Your um, your standard kind of tripod mount. But it's actually got a little twisting thing there. Now this, this design, I've got a few of these designs up the stairs, but the one that I've got up the stairs is a very cheap one. This thing is heavy duty. This one is much more secure. Uh, I would trust my phone being on this. So if you're in the car and you want to record from your smartphone, this is actually not too bad an option. The only thing is when you're actually putting your phone in it, like that, um, it's not the best. Not really. Um, it's okay, once you get it on it's okay, but to actually put it on it isn't as user friendly as other options. Okay, so just to summarize what you get, you get the tripod head, you get the, the two, um, I can call them here, the two suction cups and you get the GoPro and you get the smartphone attachments. Now, what I want to do at this point is just build these up so that it looks like this. I want to add the plate um, and where is the plate? I don't know where the plate is. Oh, there it's there. I've taken this out. This basically connects to the middle here and you can see it in the middle here. So what I want to do is connect this up so that it, it's all working and it's all ready and then I'll go to the car and we'll try it out. But for now, I'm gonna put this together and we'll see what it's like when this is actually built up like this. So I've ran into a problem and I had a suspicion that there was something wrong, but without a manual, I wasn't sure at the time. Now you probably noticed earlier that the, the handle here goes down and it stops there. Now I was a little bit confused about that. I was like, well, why is that going down there? That can't be right, but then, I saw, you know, I still have to connect this, you know, maybe I still have to connect it all up. There's no manual and all I had to go with is this picture, but it didn't take me too long when I tried to put it together to realize that this is set up incorrectly out of the box. China, this is what happens. But uh, effectively this handle that's going down here should be flipping down the other side. Now, that doesn't sound like it, it could be a big problem, but of course it is. I can't actually stick these together the way that they are right now. And even if you use these separately in some way, when you put this down onto the table or whatever you're connecting it to, this part here, when it's up, I can show you easier on this one. When this is down, this is actually open. When it's up, that is when it's closed. That's when it's you know all suctioned and it's all closed together. You actually have to do that to open it, which is the complete opposite of what should be happening. So what I have to do is, there's like um, a little screw here. I need to take that out, I need to flip it round, and I'm hoping that it works after that. I've got my screwdriver kit here. So I'm gonna take them apart, I'm gonna switch these handles round to the other side, and hopefully, hopefully I can get this working. So I used a hex, screwdriver uh, in there. So it's about, I think it's a hex 3.0. Um, and as soon as you take the handle off, this thing springs open. So be careful about that. It will spring open, the screws will go everywhere. And just be careful about this because at this point you will have a lot of things lying about. Be careful. Open. Closed. 
So it is a pain in the ass, but you can actually fix this. Just have to get a hex screwdriver and you're good to go. So another tip for anyone who buys this and they're confused about how it's all set up, because as I said, there isn't any manual. When this was set up like this, you can notice there's a um, kind of washer, plastic washer thing in the middle there. That isn't actually necessary. You know, I've connected this up here. It's very easy to set up actually once you get it going. Um, this doesn't go in the inside anywhere. It doesn't fit and it doesn't fit, you know, when you put it on the outside either. It just doesn't fit anywhere else. So it's, it's quite secure. Once you get it on this part here, you tighten this up. It's very secure. I don't know why this is here. There's no manual to see what it's for, but I couldn't find anywhere where that should be. So don't worry if this is missing uh, from your setup. Um, it doesn't seem like it's necessary. So finally, finally, I have it. I have it just like it is on the picture, on Amazon and on the box. I think that if all of them are going to come like that, I don't know if I've been unlucky, but if all of them come like that, you're going to have to you know, maybe put aside maybe 20 minutes to try and fix this. It's, it's not difficult at all. It's just, you need to get through it all. Switch the handles and then put it all together. But what I will say, and I haven't tested it in the car yet, I've just been kind of putting it to the table. What I will say is that this thing seems, it's, it's heavyweight. It, it, it looks like it will hold a lot of weight. This thing is quite sturdy. It really is sturdy. And in comparison to this, which is light, and yes, this has an easy locking solution. Once this is actually set up, you, you know, you stick this to your window and you know, you just put that down and it should suck to your windscreen. Um, and as I said, it shouldn't, it, it apparently can hold to the, to the side of your car or to your windscreen. Now, one thing that I didn't know about, and, and you can see there, I can put it upside down, you know, that's not a problem against your windscreen. That isn't going to be a problem. Um, one thing that I wasn't uh, aware of, and I think it's a good thing, is that these parts move, and that's why you've got these handles here. So I don't know if you can see the handles there. There's little, um, little parts there you can turn. So you can turn this here, and then you can put it down like that. So this, this kind of opens up a few different options. You know, if you are at a, you know, at a side or something like that, maybe you could put it against one sticks to one part of your car, and one sticks, uh, hooks to the other. I don't know if this would go across like in this way. I don't know if this would go, you know, from the side uh, window to the windscreen. I'm not sure, but I like the fact that these move around. I think that's quite a cool option. Um, the only thing I say is, when these are at the tightest, this is the, this is one criticism. When this is at the tightest, you know, it's actually you know making a little kind of cracking noise there. This is at the tightest and it still moves about. Now I don't think that's going to be an issue when I'm in the car, but it is you know something uh, to note. Uh, it does look sturdy. It does look it's uh, that it's secure and it carries a lot of weight. I just don't know why it doesn't just you know come like this out the box. I really don't. So what I'm left with is this. This is the final device. I've got these two plastic washer things that I don't need. I've got the smartphone attachment and I've got the GoPro attachment. But enough time focused on the building of this. This really should have been a two minute part of the video, but it has been longer. What I need to do now is go into the car and we'll see what this is like. It's not good that I had to build all this. It's a pain that it comes all back to front and messed all up. But if this does work, if this is as good as I'm hoping it will be, I will forgive all that. All will be forgiven if this does actually work. So let's jump over to the car and we'll see how we got on. So guys, I'm in my car and it's connected to my windscreen. It's connected to the passenger side. And um, this is the tripod that I was using before. And as you can see, it's got a very similar ball head to the one that's on there. Now I will show you that in a second. I'm recording from my other uh, camera as well. Now, first thing, before I show you this, I just want to talk about the suction cups because the suction cups weren't too good at first. I wasn't really happy with them. I tried them here and then I tried them over there. And basically what was happening was that one cup was sucking and the other one wasn't. So one was, you know, suction, suctioning, suctioning, what a word? One was sticking, I'll use the word sticking. So one was sticking to the windscreen and the other one wasn't. So what I had to do to fix it was to basically turn that little lever and then push it really hard in and then tighten it up again. And it seems to be working. It's certainly not 
as user friendly as this. This has got a, a twist and lock system, um, but it does work. Um, the other thing I did was I actually unscrewed it again. I just thought maybe the spring isn't sitting right. But I don't think it's the spring. I do think you just have to use that lever. But um, remember, you do need a hex screwdriver. And I'm looking at the, I'm not looking at the lens, I'm looking there because my camera uh, is there. So what I'm going to do now is switch to this camera. And this is what I'm seeing. So you can see there, I've got my um, LCD screen there. And um, that is the suction cups there. Now it's, it's kind of back to front. Now I, I thought there was a way to get it so that it closed uh, going up like that. But it's not a major issue the way that it works, you know. So basically the lever going up the way is is open and going down is closed so obviously i've got the camera recording i don't want to drop this but essentially this if you did that with two of them uh, they will come you know it'll, it'll come a little bit looser but what you'll find is one will maybe come off with the suction cup and the other one you might have to loosen the lever a little bit and then kind of yank it off it seems secure you know it seems secure there um, as I said, I do think these things are, are better for action cameras just because of, you know, you can put them on, take them off really easily, but maybe that's not what you want with something like this. This is an expensive camera connected to it. It's obviously more delicate than an action camera. It's more delicate than a phone as well. If this drops and it hits a lens or something, it's going to cost a lot more money. Um, but it does actually seem to be okay. It seems to be anyway. I know the light isn't great in here and the weather is terrible as well. I was actually, um, I was worried about that because obviously it's wet outside. I wasn't sure if, you know, maybe the windscreen would be a little bit moist inside, but it seems to be okay. Seems to be. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to take a quick drive and this will be the real test because it's all good me sitting here. It's all good me sitting here and saying that this works great and it's all fantastic. But it's kind of pointless if I start driving on the road and it falls down. So I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to drive and I'm hoping that this doesn't come off. And as I said, you know, I was kind of feeling it there. It does seem quite secure. But things do change when you're driving, when you're bumping over roads, potholes and different things. So you do want this to be super secure. And when I was connecting it there to this windscreen, I was trying to yank it off and it was a little bit of a pain. But as I was saying, when you've got an, exp an expensive camera set up, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You want this to stick and you don't want it to be easy to fall off. So uh, I'm going to start a car. I'm going to take a drive and we'll see how this performs in the real world. As you can see, guys, I'm in my car and the camera, the microphone, everything is in the exact same position that you saw in the previous clip. Now, you saw the previous setup, and essentially, camera-wise, I've got my Canon M50. It's got good optical, uh, it's got good stabilization. I don't know how good the stabilization is going to be. It will be better than my phone, but, you know, in comparison to something like a GoPro 7, maybe the footage right now is quite shaky. I'm not sure. I will see, uh, you know, when I go back to the computer, when I go back home, and I you know, take the micro SD card out when I put it into my computer, I will be able to see what the footage is like. But just having a quick look over here just now, it actually looks quite good. It, you know, it's high quality footage. This kind of setup, you know, it, it's not ideal in every situation, but I do quite like it. Um, so as I was saying, the camera is the Canon M50. Um, I think it's the 11 to, 11 to 22 lens. I've got the vlogging lens. And from an audio point of view, I have the Shure, Shure VP83. Now, the Shure VP83, it's a battery-powered um, shotgun microphone. It's very, very similar to the Rode VideoMic Pro. It's very similar quality. And if you look at audio test, there really isn't much between them. So it's like £180 or $200 for that microphone. I bought mine secondhand and got a little bit cheaper. Now, that microphone is very good, but it will pick up the engine sounds. Sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes it's not what you want, but because I'm using my Canon M50, what I can do is attach a lavalier mic. I can attach, you know, an audio interface. I, I can attach anything really. So I do have a lot of options. Like this, this camera does have, um, this camera does have a microphone port. So it's not like something like the GoPro where I have to go out and buy an expensive accessory or. You know, a lot of these other action cameras don't have any option for audio either. You know, I was, I was looking at the Insta360 ONE X, the 360 camera doesn't have any external mic option. So 
from an audio point of view right now I'm using the Shure um, I'm picking up lots of background noise but if I had to attach a lavalier mic the audio will be a little bit better for me it'll pick up less background noise but it depends what you want because the situation I've got just now that what I'm using that would be ideal for for many uh, shoots for many uh, situations because um, if for example I've got a friend in the car if I have a friend in the car then I will be able to pick up the noise of the car so if we're going fast I can show that and if um, you know with two of us here we don't have to hook up two lavalier mics to both of us what we can do is, you know, just use this microphone. But I'm not saying this is the perfect setup because there is no perfect setup. That it might be because of this camera, it might be a little bit harder to, to capture two people in this shot. I could rectify that by using a wide angle lens. I could rectify that by perhaps changing it for an action camera. Um, but quality looks very good. It looks very, very good. And the way that I've got it set up just now, you know, I could take my camera in and out just by removing the base plate. Um, what I'm going to do now is pick up the speed a little bit. You should be able to hear that. I'm not going to go too quick. It is raining. The weather isn't good. Um, but despite the fact that, you know, there's some of the parts of the road here is bumpy, that doesn't seem to be moving at all. It seems very, very good. <coughs> and it's one of those things, you know, how much do you criticise a solution like this? Do I criticise it for the lack of manual? Of course. It's ridiculous that something like this comes and needs to be built up. Everything is back to front and there's no manual showing you what to do. You just have to look at the box and hope that you get things right. But the other way to look at it is once you've got it set up, once you've spent that, you know, 15, 20 minutes setting it up, it's set up. Um, now, this is the kind of suction cup where you could just leave this attached to your cabinet at all times, or if you prefer, you can take it off. Um, it's up to you. Stop it again. Right, there we go. Um, it really is up to you. As I said, I do think these ones, the ones from Joby, are a little bit easier as far as you know, plug and play. You put it on, take it off, it's all good. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a bit of a cough here. But this one, it's very, very secure once it's attached. It really is secure. And the quality, yes, we're seeing action cameras getting better every year. Action cameras getting better from a stabilization point of view, from an audio point of view. They've got all these really cool features that you can do in your camera, like hyperlapse and all these other things. But the, the camera, uh, the video quality is never going to match a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, certainly when you pair it with a really good lens. So if I want to do some videos in this car and get really good footage, this is without doubt a fantastic option. And yeah, it's not perfect. It doesn't have a manual, it's a pain in the ass to get it going. And when you attach it to your windscreen, yeah, you're probably gonna be a little bit annoyed at first. You really do have to, Make sure you get one cup's uh, suction right and then push the lever to it so that it's working correctly. But once it gets going, once you've got it set up, I must admit the quality is, I'm quite impressed. I'm really impressed by this setup, I really am. Um, and I apologise, I apologise if I keep looking there, that's where the, the, the screen is. I've got a bad habit of looking at the screen. The lens is there, I know the lens is there. Um, so I'll tie up my thoughts when I go back to the house. But I must admit, I'm quite impressed by this. So I am back home now after my drive with the Fantasy Heavy Duty Dual Suction Cut Mount for DSLR cameras, action cameras and camcorders. And if you are like me, I was hoping that this would be good, and I was hoping this could handle all of those types of cameras, and I was pleasantly surprised. I really didn't think it would be as good as it was. Once it's set up, there is, you know, as you know, there's, there's a little bit of messing around to get to that point, but when this was actually stuck to my windscreen, my Canon M50, which I'm recording with right now, was very, very secure. And the audio is a non-issue because if the audio isn't good with that particular microphone, I can change it to a lavalier mic or wireless mics or there's a whole different uh, you know range of options that I've got from an audio point of view, record audio separately, etc. too. 
But from a video point of view, the footage looked really good. Now the stabilization in my Canon M50 is quite good, but I still wasn't sure how it would handle in the car. But with this suction cup, there really wasn't much movement. This was really, really secure and the camera wasn't bobbing around a lot. So from that point of view, I was very, very impressed. And as I showed you earlier on, this does come with a GoPro attachment. So for an action camera, this would be excellent. In fact, I, it's maybe overkill for an action camera, if I'm honest, because something like this is maybe a, a smaller, more practical solution. But if you want uh, your action camera and you want everything, you know, your whole setup to be secure, then maybe you can use this with an action camera as well. But they throw the mount in anyway, so it is an option. They also throw in a smartphone mount. Now, I'm not a big fan of these ones just because I find it a little bit of a pain to put them on. But this one is more secure than the other ones. You see, it's got a, a, you know, a little kind of twister thing at the back there to secure it. But what I would say is, generally speaking, if you're recording with your phone in the car, I've done it myself once or twice for quick videos, but it's always very, very shaky. And I don't see that changing in the next few years. You really should have a dedicated camera or an action camera, something with good stabilization. If your phone doesn't have good stabilization and very few mobile phones do with the front camera, then you're going to get a lot of moving about. So yeah, it's good to throw it in though. It is good that they throw it in. You know, maybe you'll use it in a different way. But as far as this goes, it's actually quite good. It really is. And I'm surprised at myself for saying that because when I opened up this box, I wasn't happy at the fact that it didn't have a manual because everything was all, you know, separate. And I had to rely on this picture to figure out, you know, what was going on. The handles, as I said, the handles were back to front. I had to get a, a hex screwdriver and take it all apart where the springs were jumping out and change these handles from the wrong position to the right position. It's a little bit of a pain and quite frankly, when you pay like 40 pounds, 40 dollars for something like this, then it should work out of the box. That being said, once you've got it set up and if, if you can, you know, spend the 15, 20 minutes to get this set up right, maybe I was just unlucky with the handles, but when, once you've got this set up right, this is a very good solution and it's a very secure solution. And the way that I've got it set up now, I just have to attach this base plate to my camera slide it in and then I just go into my car, pop it in and it locks that way. The opposite way that I thought it would lock, the opposite way that the picture suggests it locks, but it locks that way and yeah, it's quite secure. Now, as I was saying in the car there, if you find like I did, that one sucks to, uh, sticks to the window, uh, to your dashboard or your windscreen, wherever you're sticking to it. I know some people can do this to the side of the car. I'm not planning on doing that, but if you stick this in only one, is sticking to it, what you have to do is kind of loosen this part and then force it up higher and then tighten it up and just keep tightening it up. It sounds a little bit of a pain, um, but if you do it right, you should get this more secure because when I first went out the car, I was like, are you kidding me? Are you telling me this isn't going to stick? But when I actually you know, played around with the levers, I tightened everything up, it did work. And it's just like anything, once you know how it works, once you know how to get the most from it, you will be able to use it as intended. So, you know, I've been kind of going in a few different directions with my channel recently. I do want to continue to record games from, you know, from time to time. Uh, so from time to time, I do want to record videos, for, you know, gaming videos and that kind of thing. But I'm really uh, looking forward to branching out and doing more videos in the car. I want to explore action cameras more. I want to do videos with my friends in the car as well. And this, is going to help me do this. You know, from a video point of view, from a, a video recording point of view, a YouTuber's point of view, things like this, sometimes are a pain to buy, but what they do is give you another tool. They give you another way of recording videos. And it opens up a lot of different opportunities for recording videos. Now, as I was saying in, in, uh, in the, I'm, I've lost the words there. As I was saying in the car there, um, the field of vision there was probably a little bit too narrow for what you want from recording in the car. It was okay for me, but if there's two people in the car, you'd want a wider uh, field of view. But you can buy like different kind of filters and all that that help you do that, that give you the fisheye effect. And you can buy wide angle lens. And maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I, instead of buying an action camera, I can buy a wide angle lens for that camera. And maybe that's a better setup. Not saying it is, I'm just saying I have options. And if 
I, I, I you know, continue with the existing setup. Maybe I could hook up this camera to another point in the car and then I can have two cameras and, you know, I can switch between footage. I'm just kind of talking out loud here, but I just, you know, want you guys to know that when you buy something like this, it does open up a lot of different opportunities from a filming point of view. I can attach cameras, smartphones, DSLRs, action cameras, compact cameras, and the larger mirrorless DSLR size camera that I showed you earlier on. So yes, it's kind of flawed in the way that it's all set up, but once this is set up, this is actually very, very useful. And I'm gonna be keeping this for years, and I'm, you know, it's not something I'm gonna be using every single day, but when I go in the car now, I do have the option of recording from any of my cameras now, so that is very, very good. And yes, there is no manual. You have to rely on this picture and you might have to do a little bit of DIY, but if you can get it working, it does actually work quite well. So from me and the fantasy old heavy duty, Joe Suction Cut Mount, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about this, please do let me know down below in the, in the, in the comment area. I always do my best to try and answer what I think will be common questions, but if there's anything I missed, please do ask a a question down below and I'll do my best to answer them. So thanks for watching guys, stay tuned, I will do more videos soon in the car and about action cameras and things like that, so please uh, please do stay tuned for that. I'm dehydrated, I've, not, <laughs> I've been talking for too long, but please do stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching guys and I will speak to you all very very soon. Take care.